I feel like I want to actually start uploading regularly, so I don't know where I'm going with this. Like, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Hi, it is I, Adya, and it's been a hot minute since you've last seen me. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my ripping lips. Oh my goodness, ugh. Dirakuma and Kaoru episode 2, bada bing bada boom. First things first, I realized that this show, I'm not sure, I haven't actually double checked on that. On the clear folder, it doesn't call it Dirakuma and Kaoru, it calls it Dirakuma and the Amusement Park. So I was wondering, as I was saying in the last video, I kind of think making Kaoru the main character of the first two, oh my gosh, what's happening? Making Kaoru the main character of the first season was a misstep, but now that the second season is not including her in the title, it kind of like implies that the amusement park is the main character. Or that the situation is the main character. I kind of feel like there might be a third season, you know, putting everything in yet another context. If you want to hear my thoughts on the first episode, we already made a video on this. If you want to know my feelings and thoughts on the first season, we also made a very unpopular video on this. If you want to stay updated with what's ever happening in my life, besides that, just subscribe because I do little else but talk about myself. This is more of a therapy session than anything else to me. Right, okay, we are in episode 2. It starts out great because Kaoru sits on the bench waiting for the bus and she looks bumped out, which is amazing. I love it. So Kori Rakuma is living his best life, playing with his little ducky. Oh, he's just so cute. He's so incredibly cute. This episode is super fun. You know what it is? Like This is kind of like what I would have expected from the first season, that it's just cute situations for them to be in. And this episode was like 100% this, plus some... Ugh, we have like some side story about this girl. Oh, so the kid... I'm so bad with names. I'm super sorry, you guys. So, like, so the kid is named Tokyo, and the girl is named Emily. And I think there might be more girls and boys down the line, so I will try to now use their names appropriately. So this episode deals with Emily, who held Kuma at gunpoint in the last episode. It turns out she dreams of becoming a pro gamer, and she's kind of like already in this realm where she's like super famous, yet her parents kind of don't want her to pursue this, even though this is a very lucrative thing to do, and she's already super successful, so I kind of don't get the subplot. Again, it's this thing where it feels so mean-spirited. Her parents talk about like who's at fault for her trying to pursue this direction, where it's like, can your child just live? Like, what the fuck is wrong with those parents? You know, I feel like more so than being a comment on Japanese society, this probably in the end speaks for how this director and his team see the world. You know what it is? I think it's kind of impossible for everybody to be unlikable because this is not how this world functions. There are nice people on this planet. <laughs> they might not be in the majority, but it's very unlikely that everybody, including you, are being assholes all the time. Anyways, because there's no other way for her to interact with Kuma for some reason, she kind of like kidnaps him low-key. They're playing computer games. She has like a switch, which probably, well, I mean, you know, product placement, so it's not a switch. Like, they never say the name, but anyways, it's a switch. I love the visuals here because they put Kuma and her inside the game. So he's wearing like this space raider kind of costume and it's like unbelievably cute. His character is coming out amazingly nice in this episode where he's like kind of clumsy, he gets like flustered a lot, she's being, I don't know, she's a child, right? So she's kind of bratty but also kind of like cute and they're playing the game together. It's some sort of like alien invasion thing where they have to beat the aliens. Kuma is really bad at this. Later in the episode she kind of encourages him. She is kind of believing in him and cheering him on to become better 
which is like welcome change and attitude from like the first season. They're playing the game, he's really bad, she's amazing obviously because she's like a pro gamer. Tokyo and Kiro got off the roller coaster. They can't find Kuma. And by a chance, Emily's parents are walking by and they're talking about the person in the bear costume. Well, maybe that's Kuma. So they kind of go look for him. It's again one of those scenes, I'm sorry, but like they stand in front of the roller coaster. To the right, there's like two women standing. I talked about like just background characters that don't move and how distractingly static that that looks. It's almost as though they should be moving. There should be some signs of life, but they're not. So I will just now because we're already, you know, like branching out in all those side stories. They also seem to be hinting at someone who's working at the amusement park, customer service or whatever, having their own like side story going on. So like everybody has their side stories going on. So I'm just going to assume that there's some sort of like basilisk in this amusement park who curses people into becoming salt statues. At the end of the season, there's either going to be like this amazingly huge showdown where like Dirakuma learned how to fight because Emily taught him in the computer game, or this is going to be like a spin off series where warriors just coming in and they have to fight the basilisk and like rescue all the people. As of now, like the main characters, they don't seem to notice that nobody else is moving. <laughs> Tokyo and Kiroi kind of catch up with Kuma and Emily. Tokyo is trying to kind of talk to Emily, be friends, but she's kind of like standoffish and then he challenges her to a game and then he loses to her and then her name comes up and then he's like, whoa, you're kind of low-key famous and whatever. She's like, oh, my parents don't want me to become like a pro gamer. And he's like, why? And she's like, ugh, whatever. I'm also like, ugh, whatever. They're like, okay, let's hang out together. And then they go on, they go in this cup, right? The first thing Kuma is able to write, actually. <laughs> I think he's getting kind of sick, like motion sick. They're on that ride. And then Kiiroi loses the stamp rally cut. So they have to run after that. We're getting to the most amazing scene. <laughs> Nothing can top that. Like, Kiiroi runs to catch the stamp rally cut. It lands on the seat of one of those free fall tower things. It locks up. Obviously, he's too small for like, the safety rate to actually got him, right? It just shoots up. His face is just like, Eow! the peak of its height when it stops, yeeted off the thing, like, shit. And they're like, so can he fly? Tokyo's like, I, I don't think he ever did. And they're just standing around and it's like, it's the best. Like this episode, this episode is so fun. Well, besides the human characters. Speaking of the human characters, Kaoru got the back of the bus and she got the bento. Korina, the remote control for his remote conduct. Then they have to sign like a form at the, I don't know, probably like the lost and found or whatever, that they retrieve the back. Korina Kume is not giving any fucks. Playing with the remote control duck and it's like hitting the bus driver in the leg repeatedly. Yeah, Korina Kume is kind of living his best life with his remote control duck. Kaoru is being Kaoru, Emily is being a kid, and Tokyo is also being a kid. Her parents are being assholes, and all the animals are amazingly cute. The thing about this episode is just everybody's, and by everybody I mean Dirakuma, Korirakuma, and Kiroi Tori, they're all allowed to be themselves, if you will. Since they're all separated for once, they're all allowed to shine in their own right. Ko's just being amazingly cute, and the small child that he is, like, playing with his toys and like not caring about anything that's happening around him. Lila is kind of clumsy. At one point he remembers that Tokyo and Kiiroi exist so he wants to go back to find them. Emily is trying to bribe him with sweets. He kind of like starts to sweat like oh my gosh sweets of friends. I was waiting for this to be like an actual point of contention but like in the same moment Kiiroi and Tokyo catch up to them so it never even came up if he chooses the snacks over his friends, but whatever. Kira in this episode is just amazing. I, I wasn't too excited about the first episode, but like this just got really, really good, and like really, really fun. I am excited about like the third episode, to be honest. And as I said, like last time, I do think it's a great choice to not have Kaoru with the others. Like their adventures are so much more fun with her not being around. Yes, very excited for episode three. If you don't want to miss this, subscribe, also give us a like. I feel like I want to actually start uploading regularly, so... 
I don't know where I'm going with this. Give us a like, give us a sub, don't forget to, you know, go in the comments, comment wars, and I shall see you in the next one. So thank you and bye.